I no, I just I just been procrastinating a lot, you know. Nah. Like could have got these videos done way quicker. Maybe I should film two episodes today. Alright, what's up? Back again with another YouTube video. And same thing as last week. We just unwrapping what I did the previous week. So Monday, what I'm realizing is that like I'd get a lot of work the same week. Like I don't know what next week will come, but on a Monday, that's when my week would just be planned for me, essentially. The day started off by getting on a call with Ryan. He has a shoot later this week that he wants me to help out with. And then I got to following up with some potential clients and just organizing some invoices and went to archiving some projects that I needed to get off my edit drive onto my backup drive. I also got a call to help out with Zeal again for another project for Tuesday. So on Tuesday, that's what we did. You know, we, I helped, we set up another interview for the same project and it's dope. I like getting called out for, for jobs like that. You know, like my goal is to be a DP. So I just love just pulling up to set and just leaving in that, that's my job. The job is done. Wednesday was a preparation day for the shoot with Ryan. So I was parking gear, parking and organizing gear and just hashing out details with him and Antonio, what we were going for, the look that we were going for, and overall what we needed to achieve said look. There's is the shoot with Ryan. So they started off with me parking my gear into my car. Then I had to go pick up Antonio. So we carpooled to the shoot location. And it was a pretty good shoot. Like setup was 10.30 to film at 12. The first interview lasted about an hour. And then Ryan treated us to lunch at Pico's. And then we came back, turned on everything else. And then afterwards, that interview lasted about, I want to say like 20 minutes. And after that, that was wraps for Thursday. I forgot to mention this earlier, but on Monday, I did get a call about someone that wanted me to help out with the shoot. So Friday was rehearsal for that shoot that I attended just like hashing out some details in some camera positions. Saturday was the actual job. I was helping out with the Miss Kimon World live stream filming thing. So they had me on a gimbal, which I was super nervous about seeing that. I have the R5C and I wouldn't call that a gimbal cam. It's kind of heavy or my setup's kind of, I feel like my setup can be kind of heavy and the battery life just does not, I just don't feel comfortable running it off of the battery itself. So here I got some notes that I jotted down just as like a reflection over the past week of like things that I've noticed. And like I said earlier, like the mist came on with the gimbal. I need to find out a solution for that. I need to first I need to work on on my gimbal operations. It's not something that I always want to be say like using a gimbal, but I want to be able to have the skill of you know gimbal up in it like using the gimbal at the miss came on universe show it wasn't that hard but i just i just want to get better with it that's one thing and just figuring out a solution for when i put in the same position again because i feel like it will happen again and i might have to fly my camera on a gimbal so just figuring out something that i'm more comfortable in that situation it's it just something that I need to figure out. Um, solutions that I could think of off the bat would be either getting a dedicated gimbal cam, because at the moment I only have two cameras, one the R5C, two the RP, and I don't like shooting video with the RP. It's just not a good video camera. It's a very much a photo camera. So buying a camera with good battery life that I can run on a gimbal will be ideal, but a cheaper solution would just be figuring out a battery con um, configuration for use on the gimbal, where I mount it externally instead of on the camera itself, as in I'll have it like attached to the handle or underneath, so the, underneath the payload, so the gimbal can balance properly, which would be cheaper than buying another camera. 
And another thing is with like with the start of Koga, I wanted Koga to be like a creative support. I wanted there to be an aspect of creative support, hence why I like getting called on these types of jobs where I'm not the primary shooter. I may just be a PA or a grip assistant or you know something, right? And I like that, but I also want to offer more value in terms of what is available on island in terms of creative tools and. Antonio's been telling me from what's now months that there isn't really much people that would rent out their lighting. And that is something that I feel like I need to, I, I just need to stock up on, right? Because I would say lighting is more important than the camera at this point. Because if you're in a control setting, controlled lighting can make any footage look good you know like once you understand that you'll become a better photographer or cinematographer or whatever with that being said i just need to increase my my lighting gear because that is something that i'd like to rent out and with koga i want to be able to rent things out to creatives so next purchase is most likely going to be a light along with any other i'm really just listening to antonio here in terms of what he feels is not supplied on island because with him being a grip and for those who don't know a grip is a grip is a person that typically is in charge of all the gear that doesn't really have to do with the camera so that c stands anything that has to be rigged up a grip is in charge of operating and maintaining that right not say there's a lack of grip equipment on island there's like what we have works but from what he's telling me there are some things that could be pro um that could prove beneficial to have on island like for the longest while he's been telling me joshua if we had a menace arm on this shoot things would have been so much easier and that's what i feel a lot of things is it just comes up down to like ease of use because with Anthony if he could see it he could get it rigged up with the tools at hand but there are better tools to do the same job all right menace arm being one example all right and also with the other rental studios on island they're just a limitation of what they have, you know? So right now I'm not trying to compete with them. It's more trying to complement on what they already have. So they have a bunch of C-stands already. I'm not gonna buy a bunch of C-stands cause it's already there. Right now I'd go probably go like the combo stand or wind up stand route, which is less available on island. In terms of lighting, they have like our um, sky panels, right? But um, we also need like COB lighting, like aperture, aperture six, uh, 600 Ds and stuff. You know what I mean? So right now it's just trying to fill that hole in the rental market. I feel, um, I worked on a shoot with Badir earlier this year and I asked him what he'd like to, um, what would be beneficial to rent out. And he said, um, just like wireless transmitters like um intercom systems would be a, a dope thing to have on the bigger shoots you know so it's just stuff like that that i am interested in acquiring so also the footage from last week you know the little sneak peek that i gave you it's actually being posted on ig right now so if you're interested in seeing you could go and follow my ig and check out the footage and check out the pictures tell me what you think um I hope this proved beneficial to y'all watching and just gave you like a little insight into what my week looked like and what I'm thinking throughout the week and how I'm reflecting on these things. Um, yeah, so I, I just want to end this by saying, hope you enjoyed and go get some EXP.